Welcome back everybody to our studies in the law of tort. In this lesson we are moving on to the next major topic, which is of course in relation to the subject of vicarious liability. Now I noted in a previous lesson that vicarious liability is quite similar to that of employer's liability. In a certain regard, it is quite similar. It involves the kind of employment relationship and when a duty may arise in certain circumstances. But of course, there are clear differences that exist in relation to who and to where a duty of care is owed by an employer in various different circumstances as we shift away from employer's liability to this idea of vicarious liability. So in previous lessons, the previous topic, topic five, we spoke about the liability that can be derived as the result of being an employer in their duty of care to protect employees. In this lesson, we're going to talk about vicarious liability, which is a different type of liability, but also in relate, relates to a relationship between an employer, an employee, and a third party. That's the key difference in relation to employer's liability on the one hand and then vicarious liability on the other. Because whereas employer's liability relates to the duty of care that is imposed on an employer in relation to his or her employees, what vicarious liability talks about is the fact that there is a duty of care on an employer that they have in relation to a third party claimant who will then suffer as the result of the actions of an employee. So not only does an employer have a duty of care towards their employees, this is employer's liability, but an employer also has a duty of care to third party claimants who may suffer from some kind of damage as the result of actions on the part of their employees who they are employing. This is what vicarious liability tells us. So essentially, what vicarious liability does is it assumes a responsibility on the part of an employer to the actions of his or her employees. So why is it vicarious liability? Well, given that this involves essentially handing over liability to an individual who isn't directly responsible for the commission of a tortious action, why is it the case that vicarious liability even exists? Why does vicarious liability exist? Given the fact that we're not talking anymore about the actions of an employer, uh, which then gives rise to a duty of care to employees or to any other individual, we're talking about the actions of an employee towards a third party and how in that circumstance does an employer retain some kind of duty towards this third party as the result of the actions of an employee well given the fact that the employer is seen to have a certain amount of extensive control over the actions of their employees it is seen that the actions of the employee isn't entirely their own action. They aren't entirely of their own doing in a lot of circumstances. They will be following the will as well as the direction and in some circumstances the direct command of their employer. So if an employer directs and commands one of their employees to perform a certain action or to do something, that gives rise to tortious liability and essentially causing some kind of damage or harm to a third party claimant, then really should it be the case that the employer suffers from no liability in tort because they could just argue, well, it wasn't me who did this, it was my employee who did this. Of course, the response is, well, no, your employee was acting upon your direction to do this, that and the other. Therefore, you should have a certain amount of liability imposed onto you as the result of the fact that your employee was following your direction you have a certain amount of liability and this liability is therefore vicarious liability in addition to this given that the employer um, essentially stands to profit from the actions of their employees it makes sense to suggest that given the fact that they both have control over the actions of their employees in the performance of their employment relationship 
And in addition to this, they stand to profit from the actions of their employees, they should also be able to bear some of the risks that are attached to the actions of their employees, which could then give rise to damage caused to a third party claimant. So how does one show vicarious liability? Now that we have properly justified the existence of vicarious liability and given a couple of reasons why vicarious liability um, it should exist or at least ought to exist in certain circumstances, how does one actually show that vicarious liability exists? Well, we shall get into this in more detail in the next few lessons, but of course we will talk a little bit about the main elements and the main requirements for vicarious liability here, just at this initial venture. Essentially, there are three main requirements that are necessary to show the existence of vicarious liability or for a claim in vicarious liability to have the potential to be successful. There must first actually be a tort committed or they should it can be done through an omission. So the tort itself must actually exist um, and obviously and have caused damage to a third party. The tort must have been committed or it must have been an omission um, by an individual who has an employment relationship with the employer. And then finally, the tort must have been committed in the course of an employment rather than being committed outside of work hours slash work obligations. So firstly, there has to have been a tort. That's relatively easy to understand. OK, and you just would apply the basic principles of tort to show the negligence or any other tort in that particular context. That is essentially whereby the employee is a is a defendant and, and the third party claimant is the claimant. That tort must have been committed, or it must have been done through an omission, um, by an individual who has some kind of employment relationship with an employer. We'll get to the circumstances in which this can take place in the future, because of course there are various different employment relationships, and so the courts have had to approach this in various different ways. And then finally, to avoid um, an employer being liable for any kind of tortious activity by the employee, the tort must have been committed in the course of the employment. So essentially this protects against uh, an employer um, employing some employee and then for this employee to go out for it maybe on a night out um, outside of office hours and commit some tort against an individual maybe they assault someone and then this third party victim on this night out goes and tries to sue the employer of course the employer shouldn't be liable for the actions of their employees outside of work hours and outside of work obligations um, that would be a bit silly as well um, so as a result of this it is only up to uh, the uh, course of the employment that we see uh, that vicarious liability should um, arise.